and welcome to our first ever review show here on AFCB TV. Eddie Howe will soon be joining myself and Neil Perrett to go through all the highs that the 2018-19 campaign has brought. Here's a little look at what's coming up. We'll be remembering the best moments of the 2018-19 season. We'll also be looking at the new signings that have come in for the season as well as discuss those that were already here. And finally, we'll be looking at the youth teams with both the under-21s and the under-18s enjoying successful campaigns. But we're going to start back with the first team and a memorable 2018-19 season. Here are some of the finest moments. Fraser to take. And Cook with the header. And it's a goal for Bournemouth. And they lead. Wilson. Found by Brooks. King, 3-0 and game over surely before half-time. A second for Joshua King, Brooks and Wilson involved and Watford are punished again. Ball, clever from Wilson, now Fraser has Brooks with him. Tickles it through to David Brooks. It's a classic breakaway goal that could be a killer for Fulham and is a delight from a Bournemouth point of view. And David Brooks is loving life in the Premier League. Play, no surprise to see David Brooks right at the hub of it. Has the awareness to take it out of Sky, pull it back into a dangerous area. Josh King. Into Brooks. Flag stays down. Chance for King! And Bournemouth take the lead! Inside 90 seconds of the second half. Joshua King, two and two for him. And Chelsea are behind here. Brooks, Gosling, Wilson, Gosling. It looks so easy for Bournemouth. Who strike at the heart of Chris Hewton's Brighton and who take the lead in this seaside showdown. Movement in the area. Brooks with a header! Oh, I say! It's going to be attacked again. Ake is there! And he may just have won the game for Bournemouth. In stoppage time, the nine minutes to come, right at the death. Well, some of the best moments there, what a season it has been. Now then, we are delighted to be joined by none other than Eddie Howe. Eddie, thank you for joining us. I'm going to take you right back to, to August and that 2-0 win over Cardiff. It seems a long time ago, doesn't it? Certainly does, yeah. Um, yeah, great day. I think there's always that expectation and excitement of the first day and you're always hoping to get a good start. We haven't been managed to do it in our first few seasons in the Premier League, so that was a, a really big day to, to get the start we all wanted. And of course, after that game, the first away one of the season and it was West Ham and another positive result. Yeah, it was a terrific start for us. I think we went 1-0 down in that game and at half-time it looked difficult for us. But the lads came out second half and put in a, a brilliant performance, capped with the two goals we scored. And I think on the feeling of that, uh, the end of that game was one of real optimism that it could be a very special season. And you, you fueled those expectations, if you like, 20 points from the first 10 games. And what a, a record-breaking start. Yeah, we seemed to build momentum nicely and um, we had some great wins, some, some really consistent form, probably our, our best form in the Premier League really in those, those 10 games as you say and I think when you start that well it breeds confidence and everyone uh, went into the, the, the middle part of the campaign full of, um, full of belief that we could score every game we played. I think our attacking play was, was at such a high level. But then the nature of the Premier League bites as it does, the fixtures are so punishing and as is every season, you've had a run where perhaps results haven't gone your way. Yeah, we, I wouldn't say we expected it, but we knew the, the run of fixtures we had were really tough. And the, the most disappointing thing for us was we then picked up injuries. And the, the combination of the really fixtures, the injuries meant that we, 
we lost our rhythm we lost our momentum and we lost in part some of the confidence that we had built and it became a slightly difficult period for us and in terms of injuries it's not just small injuries we've had the likes of Lewis Cook and Simon Francis doing their ACLs which has, has ended their season yeah and they're, they're not just huge blows in the fact you lose the individual players but also you lose the balance within your squad so the ability now to play a back three was lost the um, balance in our midfield was, was well our midfield was stretched and as you say, it's not just they're out for a couple of weeks, they're out for the whole season. So there was a lot of reshuffling and we were playing players slightly out of position during that period, I remember, around Christmas time. And um, it was a real shame because we'd lost the, the early impetus that our start had given us. And you mentioned around Christmas time in December, we ended up playing all the teams that, that finished in the top, top four. It was a really tough, tough spell, wasn't it? Yeah, we hit, they hit us all at once. And the problem with that is... Um, once you lose the first couple the, then the second and third or sorry the third and fourth become more difficult so yeah uh, but we had to be resilient and we had to take our medicine at the time and know that we would uh, at times come out of that period stronger for for the experience but the tide turned in January when you were under pressure slightly and uh, heading into the West Ham and Chelsea home to home back to back games and it certainly turned in, in sensational style with Callum's opening goal yeah, we knew the West Ham game in particular was a huge game for us because we knew we needed a win and Callum's goal was spectacular, but it was huge for the football club. And that enabled us, that win enabled us, I think, to really take on Chelsea in, in a confident way. And that was probably the highlight of the season for me, that the Chelsea game, the way we played, the tactical discipline the players showed, the way we counter-attacked, we put it all together and produced a great performance. That West Ham win has sort of been the theme of the season. When you've needed to win... You've won. For example, Huddersfield, Huddersfield away, Brighton away. You really needed to win those games to ease the pressure slightly, and you did that. That shows a lot about the character. Yeah, I agree. Um, those games were key, and we knew, we felt the expectation and the and the pressure build for those matches, and the players responded brilliantly. Um, I would say we would need to be more consistent uh, for the future to to try and be the the team that we want to be. But you have to give the player credit when they. When they needed a performance, they dug deep and they found it. And of course, you mentioned that Chelsea game being the highlight of your season. It was a, a tough time for one player in particular, Charlie Daniels. He came up trumps at the end with a goal and that was a really special moment, wasn't it? Very, very uh, emotional. I think everyone understood Charlie's um, position and what he'd been through and uh, the difficult nature of um, life can, can throw you at times. And he showed real dignity and um, the way he's handled himself this season, he's been a credit to his family in very difficult circumstances. And that was a really nice moment for everyone in the squad to share with Charlie. And, um, and that's what we do here. I think we support people really well when they when they need it. And going into February and March, we had some really tight games. The Man City one in particular, 1-0 and, and, you know, a, a scoreline that's nothing to be ashamed of. Yeah, that game was, <laughs> we played a certain way. We, we felt it was our best way to try and get a result. It didn't happen in the end, but it was, it was very close. And we ran Man City uh, all the way in the end and... Uh, we still haven't beaten them. They're the team that we we are waiting to, to get a result against. Hopefully that will come next year. Just talking to Man City, what a fantastic title race it's been. It's been incredible and great to see from, from our perspective, great to learn from. You know, the consistency of both teams. Every week they had to win to stay in the, in the race and both teams did and it left to an enthralling end climax to the season and uh, Manchester City deserve all the plaudits. And a feather in the cap for the Premier League with four English teams in the European finals. Yeah, absolutely. I think it shows the the level of the Premier League. You know, we talk about it being the best league in the world, but it hasn't always produced the European winners uh, from the from the strong league that it is. But this year, that is different. So four teams competing in the finals couldn't be better for for English football. And to rubber stamp how tough this league is, we talk about it all the time, and it is so difficult. And we know we're going to have to improve for next year. And one of those two teams in the final is, of course, Tottenham, who played here just over two weeks ago. And getting that first win against against the side must have been very rewarding. It was. It was a nice feeling because we'd had so many difficult games against them and so many times where we've been put to the sword. None more so than the, the reverse fixture earlier in the season. That was a tough one for us. But, um, yeah, great to win. Really nice feeling. And um, I thought we deserved it in the end. And a word on Mark Travers in that game. It was his Premier League debut and he pulled off some fine saves, didn't he? Yeah, he did. Um, great debut for him. I don't think he could have scripted it any better. He made a number of saves early in the game, built his confidence levels, kicked well, managed the game well. Um, it was a special day for him. 
and you made some new signings last season, as you do, and you never really, you can never really guarantee how they're going to bed in or how long they're going to take to adjust. Just a word on on all of them. Yeah, well, we made a number of signings. We made three in in the close season in the summer window, and then another three during the January window, which we needed with the injuries that we had. So. The three players we signed in the summer, I think, did, did really well uh, throughout the season. So Jefferson and David Brooks became regulars in the team. Diego um, hasn't instantly played as many games as he would like, but we still believe that he could be a big player for the future. And then you go to January and Chris Meppham came in at a, a key time and made a huge impact when we when we needed it. Um, so did Nathaniel Klein, who really strengthened our fullback positions. And Dominic Solanke um, did some really good stuff from, from the bench mainly, but he will be a huge player for the future. And on the international stage, a number of players um, played on the, on the international stage with Callum getting his first goal and Ryan getting his first goal for Scotland as well. Yeah, so the lads have made strides on the international scene. It's been really good to see from, from everyone's perspective. Uh, Callum, as you say, scoring for England, a great moment for everyone connected with the club, for him and his family. And for Ryan, the same. Been long journeys for both players to get to this point. They've had some knocks, some disappointments but they've improved it every season and I'm so delighted for them and all the other international players who have made a difference on that stage. And speaking of, of Callum and Ryan, they've combined for 12 goals this season and it's been quite a partnership, hasn't it? It has, a bizarre one, you know, one from left midfield and one from the, the striker's position, but they have this telepathic understanding that um, they know where each other's going to be. It's been great to see and I don't think it's happened by luck. I think it's happened because... As I say, they have that understanding that when one's in a certain position on the pitch, they know where the other's going to be and they combine for some key goals for us. And as for Ryan Fraser, he's almost become the highest in the Premier League for, for assists this season, just Eden Hazard ahead of him. That's, that's quite something, isn't it? It's an incredible statistic. I think when you look at Ryan's journey that he's been on since he signed for the football club, um, I think if he could look um, back when he moved and see the future, he wouldn't have believed you know what he can achieve. So... He's worked so hard at his game, every aspect of it. He deserves all the credit that he's going to get for this season. And uh, unfortunately, he's beaten by Eden Hazard, but uh, there's no disgrace in that. And it's not all about the first team, though. We've had the under-21s and the under-18s success, um, certainly for the under-21s winning a cup and the uh, under-18s going as far as the club's ever gone in the FA Youth Cup. Yeah, it's been great to see underneath the first team that we're trying to build the infrastructure of the football club and, and try and promote young players all the time. So the under-18s, with a really good run in the FA Youth Cup, watched a number of their games, they did really well. Um, so that was great to see. And uh, as you say, the under-21s continue to impress and under new leadership with Sean Cooper and Mark Mosley, they've done very well. And there was a certain staff game played um, on Vitality <laughs> Stadium last week. number of good performances there. Any uh, food for thought? Well, I, I'm glad you brought that up, Neil, actually. Unprompted. Um, hopefully we can see my goal some, somewhere. Um, I'm sure we can one, dig that one that's out. That's probably one of the best goals of my career. That's a scary thing. It, definitely the best goal of my career in a in a in a stadium full of no one. So um, what a shame. And as for these young pairs, you mentioned <laughs> playing at the stadium, but for them, both the under twenty ones and the eighteens, they've been been out on the grass at Vitality Stadium in front of a, a sizable crowd. That's a, a great experience for them, isn't it? It's so important that they get exposed to the pressure of what the first game games can be like. And um, I remember my games vividly in the FA Youth Cup and it was career defining for me because I wanted more of it I wanted to taste that atmosphere for, for real so yeah it's um, been uh, great to see them exposed to that and for them we've seen a few of them out training with the first team and again that's going to be brilliant for their confidence isn't it yeah absolutely I think we've promoted a lot of young players into the squad this season you've seen that by a bench at the end of the, the campaign um, it shows that there is a pathway here and if you're good enough you will get the opportunity and I think there were five members of the, of the academy on the bench for the Spurs game. That you know really does go to show, as you say, that there is a future here if they work hard and, and get their heads down. Yeah, very much so. We believe um, in playing young players if they're good enough. And there may well be a pathway here quicker than maybe other Premier League clubs due to the size of squad that we have. So I think these are all really motivational points for people in the centre of excellence to look at. And a fifth successive season in the Premier League is only you and Brighton are the only two teams who've been promoted into the Premier League and not relegated so that shows how difficult it is to stay in there and the challenge gets ever harder Neil and we know next year the standards will be raised the challenges will be will be greater and we're going to have to respond in turn so looking forward to the challenge after hopefully a refreshing break I was going to say six weeks off you're not going to know what to do with yourself are you yeah unfortunately for me it won't be anything like six weeks um <laughs> 
but l- listen you, you I, i'm the type of person that wants to work and that wants to continually achieve so yes i will have a, a holiday with the family but i'm looking forward to getting started again thank you well it's been a a brilliant season I'm sure we can all agree Eddie thank you very much for for joining us and if you have been watching the AFC VTV preview show throughout the season then we thank you very much but if not we'll be seeing you back in August for the start of the season bye for now